Hello world, Tom Ticker DIY here. And in this video, we're going to take a look at this power inverter which I've chosen to run this portable mini power wall project. This inverter is rated for 300 watts continuous and it will put out 120 volts of AC power. It features two AC plugs uh, with ground uh, lugs as well, which is great. Uh, but it also includes two 5 volt, 2 amp USB ports, which are perfect for charging uh, cell phones and tablets and we'll recharge them relatively quickly with that 2 amp output that's a total of of uh, 10 watts of power there which most modern smartphones and uh, tablets uh, use to charge which is great um, so we're going to go ahead and dive into unboxing this inverter and we'll take a look at uh, what the inverter looks like and what all comes in the box and when we open it up we've got a operating instructions manual here uh, and I'm sure it has a bunch of the specifications about what makes this uh, inverter do its job so uh, do make sure that you read your um, operating parameters there and then uh, it looks like we've got the inverter itself we'll set that aside and we've got some wires We've got some fuses and something that just takes up space in the box. So there we go. That's all that comes in the box. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll get that out of the way. And um, let's take a look at these wiring real quick to see what comes in the box. Uh, let's see. We've got some uh, alligator clips um, or clamp clips, whatever you want to call them. Looks like it's already got... Uh, pre-done up uh, circle connectors to go on the terminals here. Uh, this is intended to go onto a car battery, of course. Um, and this will actually be, probably be reused with this project uh, where we will use this to make the final connections from the battery pack to the inverter here. And I'm looking around on the wiring to see if there's any markings of what gauge of wire it is. Um, by looking at it, I would probably say it's somewhere in the neighborhood uh, of about maybe 12 to 10 gauge. Probably more likely 12 gauge if I had to guess. Um, so we'll probably be reusing this just for the sake of making things a little bit easier. And then here's another wire uh, that's got a cigarette adapter on it. Uh, looks like this one uses uh, some 15 amp fuses inside of it. It's already got the pre-done uh, connections here as well. So uh, this was intended for using at lower loads. I think they recommended no more than about 150 watts of total power consumption to use off of the cigarette lighter because it could pull too much current and blow a fuse in your vehicle. Uh, and when you needed to get up to the full 300 watts of power to use um, this wire with these clips directly connected to your car's battery. Uh, luckily, we don't need this at all and we will likely just be harvesting the wiring uh, from this to run our system anyway, so that's great. Um, the fuses here, um, looks like these are 40 amp fuses, these orange yellow fuses, and there's also some tube fuses in here. Um, does not look like there's any markings as to how many amps that they blow at. I assume um, some of these fuses um, will either be used inside of here as necessary if they blow because I did see some mention that there is an internal fuse. You think you have to take it apart to get there. Uh, so at least they give you some spare fuses if you just happen to blow a fuse inside of this unit here. Um, so as we see here, um, there is an input voltage reading, an output voltage reading, and an output wattage reading. Um, so that's good to see. I imagine that the input volt is going to be good to keep an eye on and also seeing your output wattage would also be a good to keep an eye on so that you can uh, kind of gauge how quickly you're going to be depleting the battery pack. Um, and yes, here on the back it tells you about not running more than 150 uh, watts of power through the cigarette lighter outlet um, and to connect it directly to the battery. Um, and there's some other uh, stuff in here as well. And this is where it talks about the 40 amp fuses are indeed inside of the battery pack here. Um, these terminals are screw terminals. Makes it easy, I guess, to wire and unwire the inverter. Comes with a fan um, to keep the unit cool. And like I said, there is two, um, the two AC outlets and then the two USB outlets. So I like this, I picked this inverter for two reasons. One of which was the uh, compact form factor. 
but the other one was its operating range. Um, and so what I wanted to do was take a few minutes and talk about um, some of the details and, and why this why some of the setups was was done for this project. Uh, so for this Potec 300 watt power supply, the operating voltage range is uh, a minimum of 10 volts up to a maximum of 15 volts DC. Um, there is a nominal range. I think this is where the unit is probably its most efficient for converting DC to AC uh, power. Uh, and it says to run that uh, between 12.8 and 13.2 volts. And that's actually kind of a narrow window. Um, but you can run it. You don't necessarily have to run in this range. Just know that you're potentially going to be losing some efficiency if you're running outside of that. Um, there is a low volt warning that the unit will do. There's an audible alarm um, that's going to do. That's going to go off at 10.5 volts. And 10.5 volts um, divided by three is, I think, somewhere around like 3.5 volts. So um, still within very healthy range of these lithium ion cells when you'll start getting an audible warning. The low voltage shutoff is at 10 volts. So if the battery pack gets below 10 volts, the inverter will go ahead and just shut itself down to keep you from depleting the batteries too much. Now this is why I chose this unit particularly, and this is also why I'm choosing to go with a 3S configuration as well, because um, 10 volts divided by three is a little over 3.3 volts per cell. Yes, you can run these lithium ion cells down a little bit further than that safely without worrying about it. But with the way these lithium ions uh, have their voltage drop off into the way that how much uh, ca uh, battery capacity that they have, as you get further and further closer to three volts of volt three volts per cell, um, you are quickly running out of battery capacity, and so. Um, shutting down a little early at 3.3 volts is probably just fine and you're going to get at least 90% of your battery's capacity uh, while still shutting down on average 3.3 volts per cell. So that's the second biggest reason why I chose a 3S configuration um, for this inverter. Uh, and then over voltage protection is at 15.5 volts. Now. On the forums, there was a lot of debate, um, and this is on the DIYpowerwall.com forum. Um, there was some debate going on about how if you're going to build a 12-volt system, build it in a 4S configuration, which actually gives you a nominal voltage of 14.8 volts over here and 16.8 fully charged. Uh, a 3S configuration gives you a nominal voltage of 11.1 .1 volts or 12.6 volts when fully charged. Um, the argument is that with the higher voltage of the 4S pack, you're drawing less current for a given load. And while that is true, it's only proportional to the number of uh, packs that you have in series. Uh, so if we're looking at a 100 watt load between the two, uh, we're looking at a 100 amp, um, at 100 watts of AC power, we're looking at roughly 10 amps of DC current, uh, which also factors in about a 15% uh, power and efficiency when it converts from DC to AC. On a 4S side, that's only 7.5 amps. So you're only gaining about 25% less amperage draw on a 4S configuration than you were on a 3S configuration. And if you go to the full 300 watts of this system, you could potentially be pulling upwards of 31 amps DC on a 3S configuration or 22 and a half amps DC on a 4S uh, configuration. But the biggest thing to, to realize here is whether or not you're, you're running a 3S or a 4S based upon these amperage draws for each voltage configuration. When you divide that out, um, the 30 watts uh, or 30 amps divided by 20, 20 cells that's only an average of 1.5 amps per cell. If you were to take the 22.5 amps, divide that by the 15 cells over here that can share the load in a parallel configuration, it's still 1.5 amps per cell. So you're not doing yourself any favors to the battery voltage or to the battery um, ability to handle the amperage capacity 
what you're doing instead is you're making adjustments to how you need to handle your wiring to support the how much current that you're running um, and the same thing so your, your total battery capacity you know they rate these things in what's called watt hours or if you're talking about big systems you're talking about kilowatt hours um, so you take your nominal voltage for a 3S system at 11.1 and if these are 2.2 volt or 2.2 amp hour batteries and you multiply that by 20 then these are coming up at 44 amp hours of capacity multiply the two together that gives you 44.8 watt hours on the 4S configuration again you get the 14.8 volts of of a uh, nominal voltage now you're taking your 2.2 amp hour batteries and you multiply it by only 15 which means you're getting 33 amp hours of capacity multiply those together and you're still at the exact same 44.4 watt hours so no matter what configuration you're going with if you're still using 60 batteries be it a, a 3S or a 4S configuration you're not gaining yourself any extra battery capacity because all of that still is offset by the watt hours and watt hours are important because that's how you can take your total load which is your voltage times your amperage to create watts and this will support 488 watts for one hour if you're only drawing 100 watts per hour then this will run for almost five hours with this configuration of 488 watt hours and so this is a good place to just look at you know what your total power output of that system going to be for that setup now if we were trying to lower our amps per cell we would be running more than 60 batteries total because we would need to be putting more batteries in parallel for our given voltage range that we want to run at so the goal of this project was to run 60 batteries for packaging purposes if you remember this brick from the last video we're almost done getting all these batteries fully charged and we're getting to a point where we're getting close to getting ready to get it all soldered up um, but for packaging purposes I wanted to keep it to 60 cells for this size because it's a very similar in size to the inverter I intend to 3d print a case for the battery pack and then find a way to mount the inverter to the battery pack so that this is one contained self portable unit um, or self contained portable unit and so I'm not interested in trying to, to you know trying to lower my amperage demands because even at full load 1.5 amps per cell is well within the capacity of what these cells will do um, each cell again roughly being 2200 milliamp hour 2.2 amp hour at 1c it's going to be less than 1c because um, 1c would be 2.2 amps in this case we're only pulling a maximum of 1.5 amps per cell so we have plenty of capacity without stressing out these cells in the slightest even if we're at our full 300 watt load for this system and that's one of the reasons why I chose to limit this system to just 300 watts is so that I can keep the drain on each individual battery very low so that's great um, now there are some considerations of course like you, like we've talked about here where on this 3s configuration we're going to be pulling upwards of 30 amps and if you look at how um, wire is rated it's it the thickness of a wire is um, rated in what's called an American wire gauge or AWG and the bigger the number here is actually the smaller the wire the smaller the number is actually the bigger fatter wire um, this has some kind of relationship that I don't remember off the top of my head but um, there is some logic around it uh, in the metric system they just measure the wires diameter in millimeters and of course they do things a lot more simply than we do in the US but this is what we have um, so if we were trying to figure out if we were trying to figure out what size of wire that we need to run for this system to make sure it stays safe uh, 16 gauge wire is good for 10 amps of current which is way too low for this system so we would not want to use anything that thin uh, if we step up to 14 gauge it can run 20 amps of current which would actually be okay for modest loads you know probably somewhere in the range of about 200 watts of total power 
uh, but this system is rated for up to 300 watts so we probably want to go a step further uh, where we get into do the 12 gauge wire and this rated for 25 amps uh, now this may actually be a little bit closer to 30 but for the sake of illustrations I've just kind of grouped them into uh, where they're somewhat even increments um, and so a 12 gauge wire would probably run this system comfortably at 80 percent load the entire time it runs um, and that's great that's you know ideally what you want to do when you design a system you only want it to design it to run at upwards of 80% um, of its capacity and if you need a little more you have it there but ideally for power management for heat management 80% is, is a good upward boundary to try to target towards um, if we did want to go to the full 300 watts and a little bit more and having some extra cushion uh, 10 gauge wire is probably preferred to really run this system at its full extent and not worry about the wiring overheating um, or 8 gauge wire would definitely be safe but it may be a little overkill um, now what I actually plan on doing for this project is using 12 gauge wire but I'm actually going to be running two parallel strands of it so I'll have two pieces of wire sharing the load effectively doubling how much copper or aluminum there is that's going to be carrying the current which will allow me to safely run the 30 amps of load at 300 watts very comfortably and so I'll show you when we get into the phases of actually putting together the bus bars and we go to solder everything together how I intend to have those dual parallel setups and there's also another good reason why I'm using a parallel setup for both the the positive wire out of the battery and the negative wire out of the battery um, and you'll see that here in a little bit once we actually get to the, the phases of designing this battery pack so this has been a look at the inverter that I chose for this project uh, and why I chose it and again there was two reasons for its compact form factor uh, but also because I saw it was spec to have a low voltage shutdown at, at uh, 10 volts which is 3.3 volts per cell on a 3S configuration which is perfect to allow you to use 80 to 90 percent of your battery's capacity and you should not have to worry about over draining these cells and damaging them so that's uh, a talk about the inverter we've also looked at some of the maths here about comparing 3S versus 4S and what does it actually mean um, when it comes down to looking at amperage draws you know at two loads at two values um, but we've also taken a look at does it really make a difference on how much effort is put on each individual battery and as well as the total power which it did not make any difference um, so with that we're going to go ahead and get this video wrapped up I hope you guys found some of this information educational and I hope it helps you to make some decisions for projects that you guys want to do um, in the next video we're probably going to take a look at the three chargers that I'm using to get all of these individual cells up the full charge so that when I go to finally put this battery pack together um, they're all relatively close to each other so I'm not going to have any issues with uh, other batteries trying to charge one or two batteries that may be low um, so we want to get them all to about a similar voltage before we put the battery pack together and I'm going to show you the three chargers that I have um, you've seen the Opus before but we're going to take a look at an IMAX B6 we're going to look at the ISDT SC620 500 watt charger and we're also going to look at a 6S charger pack that I put together uh, for those as well but we're going to do all of that in the next video Thank you for watching. Please make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel. It helps a lot to make sure that I have engagement from you guys when you leave comments. I do appreciate that. Also, make sure that you check out the description of this video where I have links to my Amazon affiliate, uh, which will show you some of the products like this inverter, uh, where you can purchase them. And when you purchase through that affiliate link, it will help to provide some funding to this channel for future, future projects like this. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.